To determine the global or the absolute extrema, we first are going to find the critical points, then use our line analysis to inspect those critical points to ensure that they are in fact extrema, and then we'll see which one's the highest and which one's the lowest. But there's one other thing that we have to do. You always also have to check the endpoints of whatever interval you are given. So not only do you have to find the extrema, but you also have to find the values at the endpoints and compare. And that's it. Let's get started. We're going to find the absolute maximum value of f on the closed interval from negative 2 to 4. We're going to find out where it occurs. So, let's first find our critical points. To find the critical points, we take the derivative and see where it's equal to 0 or where it is undefined. So the derivative is 3x squared minus 6x. This always exists, so let's set it equal to 0. We can factor out a 3x, leaving x minus 2, and this is equal to 0. So we have critical points at x equals 0 and at x equals 2. However, we are not actually sure whether or not these are extrema yet. So we have to do our line analysis to determine whether these are in fact extrema. So here's f prime, here's 0, and here's 2. Let's look to the left of 0, like for example negative 1. Negative times a negative is a positive. Let's check in between 0 and 2, like for example 1. A uh, positive times a negative is a negative. And let's check to the right of 2. How about 3? Positive times a positive is a positive. This means that we have a relative maximum at x equals 0 and a relative minimum at x equals 2. Now the question is asking us for the absolute value, the absolute maximum value on this closed interval. So there are actually only three points that we have to check. We can get rid of two because that's a minimum. That doesn't matter to us, we want to find the maximum values. So we're going to check x equals zero, but we're also going to check the two endpoints because we need to know what those are going to be as well. So there are three things that we have to check. We have to check x equals negative two. We need to check x equals 0, and we need to check x equals positive 4. Now if you plug negative 2 into your function, you have negative 2 cubed is negative 8, negative 2 squared is 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and then plus 12, so that is negative 8. Let's check 0. When you plug in 0, you get 12. And now let's check 4. When you plug in y equals 4, 4 cubed is 64, 4 squared is 16, times 3 is 48, so we have negative 48, and then plus 12. Now 64 minus 48 is 16, plus 12 is 28. And so, even though x equals 0 was our relative max, it's not the actual global max on this interval. Instead, we have a global max at x equals 4. Why? Because 28 is bigger than 12. So this is actually higher up than our relative maximum was. So the answer is that we have a relative max at x equals 4. Let's do one more. If f and the domain is set of all values such that 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 9, then the absolute maximum value of f occurs when x is, and let's finish that sentence. So first, let's find the critical points. To find the critical points, we're going to set 
f prime of x equal to zero or c where it does not exist. So here we have x squared minus 8x plus 12. Now let's set this equal to zero. We can factor this as x minus 6 and x minus 2, which means that we have critical points at x equals 2 and x equals 6. However, we are not determined that these are actually extrema yet. So, let's actually figure that out. We'll make our graph of f prime. Here's 2, here's 6. Let's look to the left of 2, how about 0? Negative times negative is a positive. Let's look in between, how about 3? Negative times a positive is a negative. To the right of 6, how about 7? Positive times a positive, that's a positive. So we have a relative max at x equals 2 and a relative min at x equals 6. So we're going to throw 6 away because that's a min. We don't really care about that since we want to find the absolute max of this function from 0 to 9. We know that there's a relative max at x equals 2. However, we also have to check our endpoints, which are 0 and 9. So, we've got some things that we've got to do. We've got x equals 0 to inspect, x equals 2 to inspect from our analysis, and x equals 9 to expect. If you plug in 0, you get negative 5. Let's plug x equals 2 in. If you were to plug in x equals 2, what you end up getting is 17 over 3. And if you plug in x equals 9, you get 22. But the question is, which one is the absolute max? And the answer is, the absolute max occurs at x equals 9, because 22 is bigger than both negative 5 and 17 thirds. So the answer is, that x is 9. Always check the endpoints whenever you are asked to find the absolute min or max on some interval. And you will always be given an interval to look. So always check both the lower endpoint as well as the upper endpoint because your local max and your local min might not be global maxes and mins.